Hi, this is Hall of Famer Eric Dickerson, and you listen to the Harris Highlight Show. Enjoy it. Coming to you live from beautiful downtown Phoenix, this is Season 3, Episode 1 of the Harris Highlight Show. Now, for those of you that are new this year, let me just get you acquainted. I'm Blake Harris, but you probably know me as Harris Highlights. To my left here is Brady Klain, and sitting across from us, way over there, five feet away, is Josh Schaefer and Lyle Goldstein. And uh, welcome to the Harris Highlights Show. Now, really quickly, this is just a podcast that me and my friends at Arizona State do every year. This is our third season doing it, and welcome to the show. Gentlemen, it's been a very, very, very long time. Our last episode was in January. How does it feel to be back? It's good to be back. Like, I mean, our first week on cameras, first episode on cameras, we're not in our studios now. Give it a week. We'll be in an actual studio with actual microphones more than just these two here, but it's good to be back in college football right around the corner. I think you hit it right on the head. I mean, how much more can you say? Our first time on cameras, like you said, so that's cool. That's a nice upgrade we made. Everyone can see how pretty Lyle looks. Yeah, and it's great. Lyle and I are sitting over here, and then eventually we'll all kind of have our own little corners in the studio, and we'll have all have our own cameras, I think the plan is. So looking forward to that, but for right now, just glad to be back here in our makeshift studio, ready to get started and talk some college football. Yeah, so for those of you that are joining us now, you haven't, you know, you haven't made because you're getting us on camera for the first time, whereas the last two years... It was just a a sound with some pictures on it. So here we are in year three, finally upgrading, you know, all that all that revenue that we're getting, which is a total of zero dollars, finally coming in. But guys, it is time to start talking some college football. And what better place to start than the AP poll? The poll that's always so spot on, so accurate. We love it every year. But I was talking to Lyle about this earlier, guys, and I I I took this one through twenty-five, looked it over a few times. And I'll be honest, there was nothing really that stood out that I thought they got wrong, which is very shocking, because I remember last year, I don't know who it was, but we spent like 20 minutes talking about how messed up and bad we thought the, the eight people was. Yeah, I think you hit it right on the head, and I think that's something that we're actually going to, that's a phrase I think we'll use a lot in this first episode, but I mean, I was looking at it earlier today, Brady and I were sitting in class completely paying attention, by the way, and yes. I, I'm, I'm looking at the at the top 25, the AP poll and the coaches poll, there's not a whole lot of differences between the two, and any differences are very minimal, and I don't really see a whole lot for me to disagree with. I mean, when you've got the top four and three of them were in the playoffs the previous year, and three of them are powerhouses in football. Georgia starting to establish themselves in that way. I think it's hard to argue with a whole lot, at least here in the beginning. I mean, it's kind of crazy. They have the national champions ranked 21st and what is it? 23rd the yeah. in, the, in the coaches poll. UCF, obviously we're talking about the real national champions, but like you guys said, there really isn't much wrong with either poll. Obviously a couple uh, disparities between the two, but Three? Would you say three of the playoff teams are in the top three? Top yeah. four? Yeah, you're fine. There was only one thing that I kind of had a problem with, and it's not even that big of a problem. This is me being nitpicky at this point. Like you said, UCF at 21 in the AP poll, and what, at 23 in the coaches 23. poll? 23. They're a team that I would have around 25, so moving them up four spots, two spots in one of the polls... That's me being nitpicky. And the other thing is, like, for example, maybe having TCU over West Virginia at 16 and then 17, respectively, maybe I would switch them. But that's not enough to really warrant a huge complaint, at least in my opinion. So I think it's fine. I will say this. I I was really confused when I first clicked on the ratings and and was looking at it. My first thought was, why is Villanova number one? Well, I clicked (laughs) on the basketball one. That's how we're starting off this week's uh, prep for the show. I, I, Villanova number one, they're going to win national championship. I looked it up earlier. I think they're ranked like 20th in the FC, F, FCS <laughs> really? rankings. So 
throw up there, but I mean, my the one that go stood UC out, Davis. the one that stood out, to, yeah, go Ags. The one that stood out to me, and this seems like a recurring theme every year, is the fact that Texas still gets ranked in the top twenty-five. Where every year it seems like, is this the year? Is this the year? So I guess the question is, will be. But at twenty-three, I mean, I always hate when they kind of put the teams that are based off of what they kind of are expected to do. I like to kind of base it off of, okay, how did they perform last year? And as we all know, Texas, once again, was a huge letdown. Sure, I think they'll improve this year, but I think putting them at 23 when they haven't proved anything yet, I think that's a stretch. You, you also got to keep in mind that there were some other outlets. Not, you don't see it in the coaches poll. You don't see it in the AP poll. But there were some other outlets out there that were putting U of A at 10, Ooh. U of A at 13. This is a team, and I'm, we'll, we'll touch on them later. This for is a team one that, player, I'm guessing. For one player, and this is a team that hasn't proved anything yet. So I, I think that a lot of people are starting to buy in, myself included, but they haven't proved anything yet. For what it's worth, really quick, Arizona's ranked 31st in the AP poll. You know, in terms of Texas, Blake, I'll be interested to see a full year of Sam Ellinger because, remember, him and Bouchelle last year kind of – took turns with snaps and, and games for that matter, and it was it was tough to establish a starter for a lot of that season where I'm, I think now Ellinger is going to be the guy, and we'll see how he does for a full year. But you talked about the start of the show. I don't think it would be a start of a new season of the Harris Highlight Show if Josh and I didn't disagree on something because I actually thought UCF should be higher than where they are right Five now. Five minutes and 30 seconds in, we have our first Well, there you go. How about that? Boys. Because here's my thing. They lost Scott Frost, their head coach. They lost Shaquem Griffin. They lost a couple other guys like Traquan Smith, their leading receiver, but they have a lot more returning than some people think. I mean, you look at some guys like Mackenzie Milton, their quarterback who's returning, Adrian Killens, Killens, their starting running back, and then their leading tackler and linebacker Pat Jasinski. I hope I said that name right. But this team has a lot returning. Jasinski was the leading tackler last year. It wasn't even Shaquem Griffin. So when you look at this UCF team, for a team that went 13-0 and last year and beat Auburn for that matter... I, I think they deserve a little bit more respect than 21. Would I put them in the top 10? Absolutely not. But I think somewhere around 15 to 16 could have been warranted. My, my only thing is what team are you going to bump off? Because, I mean, I, I'm looking down. Maybe like a Mississippi State, maybe like a Virginia Tech, even if that. But I, I don't see any team that you can put them in front and say UCF is better than this team. I mean, how about Florida State? They didn't do anything last oh, year. And they also lost their coach. That's true. I mean, Francois is coming back, but there's one team right there. Yeah, that that's true. But I mean, for the most part, like like I mentioned, it's a it's a fairly good AP poll. Some other teams that round about South Carolina, which a lot of people are high on South Carolina this year. Florida got some votes. Utah, how about that? Utah twenty eight. They got a lot of votes. And some teams down here that I want to mention: Kentucky, Arkansas State, Fresno State, Troy, Memphis, Houston. All those teams getting votes. Josh Northwestern got thirteen. I know you're low key high on them this year, so that's gonna be interesting to see. But Really quickly, guys, the top four, five, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think it's a pretty accurate top four? I think so. I mean, I, I think they just about hit it on the head. I mean, Wisconsin obviously missed out on the playoffs last year, but they were undefeated up until that conference championship game. And, of course, they're returning Jonathan Taylor, too. All right, now, speaking of the top four, we're going to get into our way, 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 way too early top four predictions for the end of the season. Now, a lot can change. <laughs> We're probably going to yeah. be way off. But guys, let's go. I mean, it doesn't have to be necessarily who thinks going to be one, two, three, four. If you want to do that, you're more than welcome to. But what four teams do you guys think are going to be fighting for the national championship this year? Well, I'll tell you guys right now, I, I'm I'm making my national championship prediction right now. Oh, man, we're doing our way I, I am, I, our I am way making my one pick right now, and I think that Clemson's going to win it this year. Ooh. I'm very high on Clemson. They have, without a doubt, the best defensive line in the country. I'm a big fan of what they have coming back offensively. I have them making the playoff. Look, look I, I think the AP Top 25 got it right. I like... Alabama, I like Clemson, I like Georgia, and I like Wisconsin. Not necessarily in that order, and I'm going to go ahead and wager that two, potentially three of these teams do not make the top four at the end of the season. But those are the four teams that I think are going to be the best right now and could be the best at the end of the season. And I'm sure we'll talk about a couple of these teams a lot more individually a little bit when we get uh, when we get further into the show. But those are my top four. I think the AP Top 25 got it right to start the year. I've got Clemson, Alabama, and uh, Ohio State, for that matter. I know Ohio State, another team that didn't quite get in last year, and I know they had a lot of roster turnover and, of course, everything that's going on off the field as well, to say the least. But I think this is a team, you look at them, and they're one of the white-collar schools in college football. They bring in all these great recruits. Next man up is no problem for them. But here's my kicker. 
I spread things out this year. I don't I don't think there's going to be two teams that get into the playoffs from the same conference. I think it's going to be spread out. And here's my Pac-12 team that I think is going to make it. I legit have real faith in Stanford. And I know that might seem like a stretch. I know it might seem like a little bit of a push. But here, you look at Bryce Love returning, who's arguably the best running back in the whole country. You look at their three leading receivers coming back. Costello's coming back. And then you look at their schedule. They play a lot of tough games this year. They play USC at home, Oregon at Autzen, Notre Dame in South Bend, and then to top it all off, UW in Seattle. So if they even lose two of those games on the road and then they come out and win the Pac-12, which they came up just short on last year thanks to a dominant goal line stand by USC, I mean, this is a team that can come out and really surprise some people. They're in... The mid-teens, I know, to start in the AP poll, I think they're right at 13. But don't be surprised to see this team really come on this year. I like the top two that the AP poll have right now. Alabama, Clemson. I think those are, I'm not going to call them locks. We haven't, yeah, we haven't even had the first real game of the college football season so far. Yes, Hawaii played and Hawaii won. You're going to call that a real game? No. Yeah. Does that look like an H? Go H. Go Rainbow Warriors. Alabama, Clemson, I think those two teams make it. I think Oklahoma, losing Baker Mayfield is a big thing for them. But they're not lacking experience whatsoever. I think Oklahoma's going to make a jump and go into a playoff. My fourth team in there is someone I'm going to foreshadow later in the show. I think that's going to be West Virginia. West Virginia has one of the top quarterbacks in the country. What do you, what's that look no, for? No, this is this is Wilton Spate. Here, here we go again. No, I, look, West Virginia. No, no, a good this team, is more of my TCU from last. Year. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So my far, I'm going to go Alabama, Clemson, Oklahoma, West Virginia. I I I guess it's something about sitting on the side, Brady, or that you copied my notes because I haven't I was, seen your notes. I don't you see, hide them. Well. I don't see any notes over there, so you may be cheating. Who knows? Notes, dog. But I'll, I'll I'll just go because I ranked them in my my top four. I got Georgia at one, Clemson at two, Wisconsin at three, and I also have West Virginia. I have them there at four. I think arguably they have no one of the better quarterback wide receiver duos in the country. They're returning a lot of talent. I was looking at their schedule and. I think at least they're winning 10 games. They should win 11. Will they go undefeated? I'm not sure. But West Virginia, I I, I think they have what it takes. We know they're going to score points. That's not going to be a problem. Defense, you know, if they weren't one of the worst ones in the Big 12, so that's what they got going for them. But I, I'm telling you, David Sills, I, I think he is very, very underrated. Former USC quarterback at the age of like 10 years old. <laughs> Lane Kiffin, baby. However was old, that the one Lane Kiffin offered? Yep, was like it was. So how old he was. And Will Greer, guys. I mean, was it was it last year when he like broke his thumb or something? It was like completely going another mm-hmm. way, kind of ruined him at the end of the season. Will Greer's the real, real deal. I'm not saying he's going to be a top 10 draft pick come next season, but this guy's going to be one of the first quarterbacks taken off the board. And West Virginia, especially coming out of that Big 12. I like Oklahoma. I, I think losing Baker will hurt them, but they do have a lot of talent on that team, some talent that I know Lyle really likes. But if I'm choosing one team from the Big 12, it's going to be West Virginia. And I forget, it may, it may have been you that said it or Josh, but, or Lyle, I can't remember. One of the four but of us. But I, I don't think they're gonna, there's going to be two teams from the same conference making it again. I, I First off, I don't think that's how it should be, but I, I don't think it's going to happen. And I know everyone's going to say, where's Bama? I, I think Bama's going to lose one or two games during the regular season, and I think they're going to go down to Georgia in the SEC championship if that's who they meet. I just Eventually, Bama's run has to come to an end, did and you, I, I think this is the year it comes. Did you, did you say you had Oklahoma and West Virginia in your no. Final Four? Georgia, no, Georgia Clemson, oh, okay. Wisconsin, and West Virginia. Okay. Yeah, that's bold to have Bama out. I'll say that much. I, I mean, it, ha- it has to happen, right? It has to I don't, happen. I'll believe it when I see it. it, it because it, every year they lose one game in the regular season, somehow they get in, and then the rest is usually history. It, it has to happen. But as, as I did mention, I was talking about Lyle and um, some talent on Oklahoma's team that he likes. So what a perfect transition then into our Heisman picks, our way, way too early Heisman picks, because, I mean, as, as we've seen, usually whoever wins the Heisman was nowhere to be found at the beginning of the season. So probably all these guys we have on our list – won't they, make it. They won't make it, but hey, <laughs> that's what the early predictions are all for. So guys, you guys can say one guy you think is going to win it, multiple guys you think, however you want to do it. Let's hear it. Am I going first? Josh, go ahead. All right, if well, I'm want. thinking uh, I'm going to – there's one guy on my list who I think will be in Heisman contention at the end of the season, and that's my Heisman front runner. It's Bryce Love. 
In my opinion, Bryce Love should have won the Heisman Trophy last year. He rushed for over 2,000 yards. His final four games, he played on, what was it, like two leg injuries, and he still rushed for 600 yards in those four games or something absurd. I mean, 2,118 yards and 19 touchdowns. He was the best running back in college football last year. No offense to Baker Mayfield. I think he was the best player in college football last year, considering he was playing with an injury for half of the season. I think he missed a game, too. So he's my front runner for the Heisman Trophy. Um, I like Jonathan Taylor, the Wisconsin running back. I kind of foreshadowed this earlier. I think we all kind of did. I'm, I'm buying in. I'm buying in on Wisconsin this year, so I'll talk about them in a little bit once we get there. I still like Khalil Tate. We've seen some good signs from him, the new quarterback at Arizona, new quarterback at Arizona because he's new because people care now. Um, but we all saw him last year, and he was phenomenal. Um, and then I also have a hot take. I kind of mentioned this to Brady earlier when we were 100% playing, uh, paying attention in class, and the only reason I'm mentioning this now is because it's our Heisman picks. There will be somebody out of the state of Michigan – that finishes in the Heisman voting in the top five. And it's either Shea Patterson, the quarterback at Michigan, or Brian Lewerke, who we're going to see in week two here at Sun Devil Stadium. Uh, Lewerke from Michigan State. These are two really good guys that I'll touch on later. I like the both of them as a potential Heisman dark horse, especially Michigan State's Brian Lewerke. Well, Blake transferred it to me, I know. And and I guess this is my hot take. Or, or, or You know what? First, I'll just go with the guys I think will be more in the – Heisman contention. I mean, more the usual, uh, you know, usual names you'll hear throughout the season, at least on the way too early Heisman watch list. Running backs like Jonathan Taylor and Bryce Love, like Josh talked about. Quarterbacks, you look at Khalil Tate, you look at guys like Shea Patterson, Will Greer. I mean, those are the names you're going to see for most of the first half of the season in terms of the Heisman watch. In terms of my sleeper, and I guess this is my hot take too. I absolutely love Oklahoma's running back, Rodney Anderson. And wow. I was talking to Blake about this for weeks. I think this kid is an absolute stud. He had 17 touchdowns on the season last year, 14 of them coming in the second half of the season. And then you look at really his second half stats, and he had double-digit rushing yards in all of but two of his final uh, seven games of the season, and then you look at that game against Georgia, who's arguably the best defense in the whole country. 200, ru 200 rushing yards against a team that, like we talked about all of last season, was probably the best defense in all of the land, and Rodney Anderson absolutely tore them up. This is a kid, I think, if Oklahoma is going to be in the contention this year, if they're going to really make their push toward the college football playoff, that's who's going to lead it, and that's who I like as my Heisman sleeper. Ooh. Man, I, I, we were going to save the hot takes for its own segment, but right now these guys are just coming out with them. I, I like that. I I like those hot takes a lot. I mean, you can't really go wrong if you're going to choose a quarterback or a running back, and that's kind of what a Heisman Trophy winner nowadays is. And I think those are some good ones. But Brady, I mean, I, I, I don't know if I want to mention who your Heisman sleeper was last year, or let alone your Heisman pick. Wilton Spate, ladies and gentlemen. Wilton Spate. So, that really turned out well. So let's uh, let's hear who your pick is this year. I'm not going to give a top five because, like you said in the tease in the beginning of this, it's going to change. But I do have my winner, and I foreshadowed him earlier. I think Will Greer is the real deal at West Virginia. He's one of the most true quarterbacks in college football. There are a lot of guys that are athletes that can scramble out of the pocket, but Will Greer is one of the most true quarterbacks in college football. So I think he's going to win the Heisman. I think some of the other guys that will be in New York will be a guy like Bryce Love. Um and you could even see a defensive player, Nick Bosa, jumping the list up there to throw out a defensive player. I'm not saying he's one of the Heisman line. How about Ed Oliver, I was going to say? That's yeah, another Oliver one. also out of Houston. So those four guys could be the main ones, but I think those top two that I said uh, with the winning player going to Wilger. Now, I know this guy. I mean, he's not on my list because I don't think he's going to be there come December because he's on a pretty bad team, but he's not in my notes. And that's Cole McDonald who's the quarterback for Hawaii. I don't know if you guys watched this past week's game. He went for 500 yards in his first career start. This guy looks like he's going to be one of those like Hawaii quarterbacks from 10 years ago when they were throwing, like I don't know, 10,000 yards a season and rushing for another couple had, thousand. Wasn't Colt Brennan yeah, there? Yeah, Colt Brennan. Colt Brennan. And there were some other good ones, but like, Hawaii's probably going to win a few, few more games, so he's not going to be there. 
But if you just want a fun guy to watch and you're on the East Coast and you're up at 6 a.m. and Hawaii's game is just starting, watch watch that guy because he is, he's a fun guy to watch. But some names I got here, obviously Jonathan Taylor is going to be there because I think, I think he rushed for over 2,000 yards last year as a freshman. I think he was the first ever to do so. And Wisconsin, without offensive line, who's like a combined, you know, 350 pounds each guy, I could run behind that offensive line. Well, probably not. <laughs> um, Bryce, you have to run first. That, yeah, I got to run first. Bryce Love, obviously another one that's going to be there if he stays healthy. And then the three quarterbacks that I really like, Will Greer, Trace McSorley, who's – I. it feels like Trace McSorley is one of those players that's been at Penn State for like the last five years for whatever reason. That's because he exploded <laughs> a few years ago and he was in everyone's Heisman like preseason list last year and then he just disappeared kind of. So he didn't have it's a more of a hand it to Saquon mentality. He's, he's still yeah. there. And here's a name I don't think you guys mentioned, Jake Fromm. Jake from State From. I, I think he's potentially going to be there in the end as well. But that's not my number one. I kind of confused you guys there. My number one is currently the Heisman favorite, and that is Tua Tagovailoa, oh God. the quarterback for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Now, I, I am, oh I am in God. fact kidding. He's not in my top five at all. But I know Lyle has some thoughts on Tua being named the Heisman favorite coming into the year. So, Lyle, the floor is yours to talk about your best buddy, Tua. I'll let Josh get in on this, too, and I know Brady's shaking his head because for those who remember our last show before our award show, I think we went on about this for at least, like, eight minutes. At least. This guy has played one half of football. I don't care what game it was. He hasn't even been named the starter yet. He has 11 touchdowns. Him and Jalen Hurts are currently listed as co-starters on the depth chart. This guy's played one half of football, and I don't care what game it was in. Yes, he made the amazing throw in the national championship to win it, but let the guy have a few games under his belt first. You know what happened with Sam Darnold last year when he was the Heisman favorite? He threw like a handful of picks in the first two games, and just like that, he was gone. And Sam Darnold's first year as a starter, he was incredible. And he played a full, or not a full season, but three quarters of a full season. Two has played one half, Blake. I think you got to let them play a couple of games, and then, <laughs> and then you know Alabama. Simple they're going to play. Out. Who does Alabama? What does Alabama? Oh, we're not do? saying he's bad either. No, just, look, the guy. The guy's highly touted for a reason. He was the number one dual threat quarterback for a reason. I'm just saying he needs to play first. And yeah, Bama's going to have their games this year where they play a bunch of cupcakes, and Tua's numbers are going to be way inflated just because of that. But can we see him actually play some good teams and some good defenses, and see him light those teams up? With more than a half of football before we give this guy the Heisman, like why is he at four to one odds? Like why? <laughs> Lyle, Tua last year played in eight games, threw seventy-seven passes, had six hundred and thirty-six yards, eleven touchdowns, two interceptions. Okay, and, and he's never started every, a game. I was gonna say everything other than that second half of the national championship is in garbage time. You're really gonna look at garbage time numbers and and use that as a as a point of an argument? Like no, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying he deserves to be up there. I'm just saying. You kept saying he's only played one half and thrown two touchdowns. Okay, but I'm sorry. He's played in garbage line. time, and he's inflated his numbers. How about that? He's played in one meaningful half of there football. I mean, like, uh, it, it, you, you, can, you can look at the USC starting quarterback job, and they give it to a true freshman, which we'll probably touch on a little bit later. But they have backup quarterbacks who have touchdowns because they came against Oregon State. Like, that doesn't mean they're giving they're just given the starting job because they can light up one of the worst teams in FBS football. And that's every game for Alabama when you're up by a thousand against every team you play. Like, and, and even going off of that, for as good of a half as Tua played, had he not made that throw, say Damian Harris had punched in the winning touchdown, no one would. Would care. he have been the Heisman favorite right now? No, it was because he made that one throw after he got sacked on the first play of over of their drive in overtime, and then he made that 45 yard throw or whatever it was. Talk. I talked with some people today, and Josh, you were there with me. I, I was talking with someone who covered Alabama for the last six years. And her main focal point was covering Alabama. And I asked her, who's starting week one for Alabama? She said it's Jalen Hurts. He's starting week one. Well, the guy's 25-2 and two in his career as a starter. They make it seem like it's such a, you know, such a big thing. He has and such done a big nothing deal. to lose the starting job. Exactly. I'll, I'll just put in my two cents here oh, since boy. I've sat back in silence. I was the one that, I mean, I predicted, too, it was going to win the starting job, which I still think he will. I mean, if... If he doesn't, then sometime during the middle of the season he'll get it because he is the better quarterback. I mean, you can't really make an argument. Well, that's fine, but you were ready to name him the starter on January 9th of last year. Which, I mean, I, I still think he deserves to be the starter because if he's the better quarterback, I don't care if you went 40-0. and 0. If you're the better player, you're going to suit up week one. My thing is why I don't think it's too outlandish that he's number one. Since the year 2000, there's only been one running back that's won the Heisman. Mark well, Andrew. I mean, it's been two, but... 
you know, it Reggie says Bush one. Won the it's, it says one. And the last running back to win the Heisman was back Mark Ingram in 2009. It's a quarterback award now. That's what it's turned into. And I, I was what about Derrick Henry? I was – Derrick Henry? Oh, 2015. That's right. My bad. I saw this right here. Okay, so Derrick Henry. So there's been three technically in the last 20 years essentially. Oh, Alabama. So my thing is – and I saw, I saw some stat also earlier. I was watching some college football show on ESPN. They're all the same. In the last like 25 years, every guy that's won the Heisman finished with a team that finished in the top 10. Alabama's going to finish in the top 10 most likely – which leaves about 10 teams in their quarterbacks. So if you look at all the teams in the top 10, look at their quarterbacks, Tua is one of the ones that's going to be up there. I'm not saying that he's going to win because the fact that he hasn't been named the starter, that's a risk in taking him. But I get where they're coming from because the odds are in his favor, especially if he lives up to the hype that he's given us. Well, that's fine, but 4-1 to one odds and leading the race? But, like, come on. That's that's why. But, I mean, I, I, I think it makes sense. Oh. <laughs> well, according to that uh, cash register going off, I guess that is time for our brand new segment, guys, that we're uh, incorporating into this year. I like Blake's bets. I mean, we guys, we can come up with a name for that, but I think Blake's bets is very subtle and very nice. What degenerate Blake loses more money. Now, guys, <laughs> we're going to be doing Blake's bets where I examine every week, in my opinion, the best bets that you guys got to get in on. And these are all using Bovada. But speaking of Bovada, guys, it's a great website now that sports betting is legal in the United States. So if you guys are interested in signing up for an account, my link is going to be in the description below. If you guys are interested in winning some money, when you guys sign up Bov using my link, Bovada will give 50% of whatever you deposit into your account. So if you, you know, deposit 100 bucks, that's 50. That's no. $50. So that's $150 you get to deposit. Free money. I used it way back in March Madness and I won I won a lot of money and it was fantastic. By one point too. Blake's just was, a slight gambling man for all I'm of our not friends. A gambling man, but and I figured this would be know. a fun thing to check out and every week we can look back and see how I did in the bets but guys i got five bets this week that really caught my eye and i really really like them and if you're out there in vegas this weekend if you're you know on bovada doing some sort of gambling i think these are the five games that you absolutely should just go right in on full disclaimer we're hearing these for the first time yes. right now my first one guys <laughs> is alabama at 24 and a half over louisville if i'm a betting man I'm taking Louisville with that because I, 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 I do not think that Alabama beats Louisville by 25 points. I, I honestly don't. That's, I, I, it's in a neutral site, and I think Louisville is going to put up some, po some points. I think it's going to maybe be like 35 to 14, if that. But 25, that's asking for a lot because as we've seen for Bama, they're not really one of those teams that will kind of win by like 60 or 70. They kind of go up a few touchdowns and kind of stop trying, put it in their second strings who are all still five stars. But I, I think that's a lot to ask for. Unless they're playing USC, then they'll win by like that, 60. That is true, yeah. Oh, boy. My next one, Florida State over Virginia Tech, 7.5. I think it's going to be a highly competitive game, but I think asking Florida State to win by at least a touchdown after what we saw from them last year over a very, very good and underrated Virginia Tech team, I think that's asking a lot as well. My next one, and I, I really like this one, and that is Troy and Boise State. Boise State is favored by 10.5. And the game is at Troy. We saw what Troy did last year to LSU. And our good friend Seb, who's a passionate, passionate Boise State fan, he was, I, I can't remember because this is about a week ago, but he was telling me this amazing stat in regards to, like, Boise State on the road, like in, like, week one games, how it could be trap games for them. And Troy, over the last few years, against teams, not necessarily like an LSU type, but teams that aren't just, like, a bottom dweller, they're pretty good. So the fact that Boise State has to win by 11... Watch out for Troy. That's going to be one of our pick'em games, and I'm very interested to see what you guys have to say about that. Now, enough of the point spreads. Let's talk about the over-unders, because I know that's one of the more, the more favorable ones. And the first one I want to talk about is West Virginia and Tennessee. Now, we all know how many touchdowns Tennessee is going to lose by, which is going to be a lot. The over of 61 points. I think West Virginia is going to put up at least 40 at least 40 on them, which is asking Tennessee to score about three touchdowns, which I don't think is too unreasonable. So I think the over of 61 points, definitely you got to go there. And my final one, the over of 64 points in the Ohio State-Oregon State game. I think Ohio State scores 64 in the first three quarters because this Oregon State Beavers team, whew, we're going to see them later in the season, and it's not going to be pretty. So Ohio State, Oregon State, the over 64. But that wraps up my five picks this week for Blake's bets. 
Wow. I like the segment. Wow. I like the oh, segment. Well, thank you guys. Maybe maybe you can start, you know, winning some of that money back, buddy. <laughs> oh no, there's no need to worry. But guys <laughs> No need to worry. Let's talk about I forgot to write it on the board, but let's talk about our conference picks. Now last year we kind of like dove more deeply into the conferences because we had a few weeks before the season started. We only got a week, so pretty much we're gonna go through the power five conferences. Give me who you think's gonna win, like a sleeper team you think, and maybe like a player to watch. Josh, I'll start with you in the SEC. Are we start? Are we gonna go conference by conference? Or we'll go conference by conference okay. instead of going. So we'll all, start in the SEC. Around. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a couple conferences like this. There's a lot that I'm looking at here, and I just don't see a whole lot of reason for me to change from what I had last year. I'm taking Alabama to win it. Um, are we do, are we doing our champion and then a sleeper? Yeah. Or are, so okay. Um, my quote unquote sleeper. Is going to be Georgia. I don't see a reason why I should have any other anybody else other than those two teams. I think those, without a doubt, the two best teams in the conference. They'll lose a game here or there, but I think Alabama and Georgia are the two best teams in the SEC conference, and I don't see any reason to stay away from them right now. But I'm taking Alabama to win the SEC. Taking Bama to win the conference. I mean, just going with the chalk. Surprise, surprise. I didn't put Georgia as my sleeper just because I think you know they're ranked as a top ten team. So I, I get what you're com- where you're coming from, but I just wanted to pick go a little bit of a different route and take a different angle. I'm going to go with South Carolina as a sleeper. This is a team that won nine games last year. Do I think they're going to win the conference and make the playoffs? No, but I think they could surprise some teams in the conference. I'm going to go with Alabama also. Um, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, a sleeper team here. I'm going to go with Tennessee, one of the best home wow. field advantages in all of college football. They What, what is it, Josh, 90,000 people or something I, like I that? I think it's 100,000. Some yeah, crazy stadium. number, but... They always sell out. They're honoring Peyton Manning this year for his 20th, 20, I think it's 25th anniversary of when he played. You a big Peyton Manning guy? Kind of. We have to go over what our teams are, by the way. We haven't done that. Um, Tennessee is going to be my sleeper team for the SEC. Ah, I'm not going to say they'll make it into a playoff, but they're going to make it to a bowl game. I mean, at this point, we don't, we don't need the hot takes segment because everyone's just dishing out their their hot takes. For the SEC, <laughs> as I mentioned, with Bama not being in my top four, obviously I'm going to go with Georgia. I, I think they're the best team in the SEC this year. And I have two sleeper teams. I know I'm kind of going against the grid right there. My first one is Missouri. Now, Missouri, I, I don't think they're going to be like a 10 or 11 game winner, but I think they're a team that can knock off one of the bigger SEC powerhouses, especially with Drew Locke who's probably, he might even be in Heisman contention if Missouri can win about nine, nine to ten games. And my other one, I think it was Josh that touched up on it, is South Carolina, or Lyle. I, it's, it's, you know, it's, just, it's hard to remember over here. We're, oh. so, we're so far away. It's all good, That's Doss. okay, Blake. The sound is just bouncing to and from, <laughs> but I, I think South Carolina easily can go 10-2 and two this year. Um, they do have to play Georgia. They do have to play Clemson. If they can squeak out one of those, win, one of those games and have a win, they could go 11-1. However, though, however... This is my thing with South Carolina. They do have Georgia and Clemson. But we are overlooking this November 17th matchup, guys. I forgot. It is at home. But on November 17th, they will be hosting the Chattanooga Mocs. And that is a game, I'm telling you, do not sleep on Chattanooga because the Mocs are hungry. You know, they had a warm-up schedule the last two years, going to Alabama, going to LSU. It was pretty much just preparing them for this showdown with the fake USC South Carolina <laughs> And I'm telling you guys, they're going to mock the world, and they're going to pull off the upset. So South Carolina, my prediction, 10-2. and two. Can we just say this Don't is, sleep. Can we just say this is our third season with our whole Chattanooga campaign? I mean, you, you think back to our first year doing this, and we said it once, and all of a sudden it blows up, and here we are three years later with it. Buy your Don't Sleep on Chattanooga merch. Hey, one, one year, I'm telling you, Chattanooga's going to get the upset. I mean, if it takes every team in the SEC, by goodness, they'll do it. But that's the SEC, guys. Let's talk about the ACC. So starting off with the ACC, um, I'm going to go ahead and take Clemson. Like I said, I think Clemson's – they're my national championship pick this year. Uh, I like Kelly Bryan at quarterback. I think he can come back strong. I think they have, if not the best defense in the country, I think they have the best defensive line in the country, and it's not even close. These are four guys that are all going to be picked in the first round this year. I think these four defensive linemen at Clemson can all be picked in the top 20 picks. Well, they have, a, they, have they definitely, I think, have at least two that are definitely top 10 two, picks. Yeah, they have two that are going to go in the top 10. I, they could have two that will go in the top five. Christian Wilkins, I know. And then who's the other one? Dexter you guys are Lawrence. Thinking? Yeah, yeah, and they—they're they're my easy pick to take down, uh, to take the ACC uh, championship. Now I had 
a team at sleeper earlier in the day, and I actually changed it about an hour or two before we started. I had Virginia as a sleeper. Now, this isn't a team. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I know, I know, I know. This is not a team that I think is going to win. here with all these hot takes. This is not a team that I, I don't think they're going to win the ACC championship. I don't think they're going to compete for an ACC championship. But I do like a couple of the pieces they're adding. And, they, of course, they have former ASU quarterback Bryce Perkins coming in. I think that he could be a, a huge uh, upgrade for this team offensively. Bronco Mendenhall's done a lot with the team in two years. Took him from a two-win team to a six-win team. Went to the first bowl game since, like, 2010 or 2011. So I think that they're going to be a much improved team. I don't know how deadly they're going to be. So my actual sleeper team... I'm going to go with Pitt. They have a favorable schedule, um, both in their division, across the division. Their non-conference schedule is a little bit interesting, but they have a lot of different pieces in the depth chart that I think do look kind of favorable uh, to their team, especially defensively. So I think Pitt could be a decent sleeper team, but I'm going to take Clemson to win the ACC championship. Man. I have Clemson, too. Again, chalk again. I mean, and, and it's hard not to go with it the way they've been the last three years and how dominant they've, their, all their performances have been. Here's a little bit of a hot take with Clemson, though. I'll be interested to watch if Kelly Bryant lasts the whole season as a starting quarterback. And I say that because they have a kid named Trevor Lawrence, who was once the number two recruit in the entire country. And this kid is really, really good. And he hasn't gotten much of a chance to play because Kelly Bryant took the job and rolled with it last year. But the talent's there, similar to Tua, and and I don't think Trevor Lawrence should win the Heisman if he has one good half. But if Trevor Lawrence gets a chance to step in and play, I think that Trevor Lawrence has a chance to really roll with that starting job because the kid is really good. And Clemson, as we know, talent across the board, especially up on that front seven. As a sleeper, I like Florida State. I mean, DeAndre Francois goes down week one last year. Their whole season kind of goes down the dumps. And then you look at the rest of their team. They have Cam Akers returning at running back. They have Levante Taylor in their defensive backfield who is just an absolute stud of a player, Levante Taylor, and I think we'll hear his name early on in next year's NFL draft. So Florida State, they have some dudes, they have some talent all around the board, and I think they're going to bounce back this year. Well, I still the words out of my mouth. Clemson, number one, I, I think we can all pretty much agree on that, and Florida State uh, is going to be my sleeper team. The loss of Jimbo Fisher, though, will be something big for them to look out for. Such a coach who is usually put with Florida State, in the last couple of years, but him jumping over to Texas A&M. It'll be unique to see how Florida State bounces back from losing such a staple of their program over the last year, a couple of years. So uh, I think Florida State will do well. Yes, they're 19th to start the season, but the loss of Jimbo will be big for them. Yeah, I think this might be our only clean sweep in regards to the, uh, the conferences because I have Clemson as well. I, I do like the Florida State pick. But I I don't really know if they're much of a a sleeper because there are kind of a lot of expectations for them. A lot of people have them, you know, finishing top 10 when the season gets out. Um, I'm going to go with Virginia Tech as as my sleeper. Um, That they got a huge matchup week one, so it could completely change after that. But Virginia Tech, they've just been one of those teams where it just seems like every year they're not one of the better teams, but they're always just really good. And it's always kind of like, is this going to be the year they break out and really push it to like the 10-11 win mark? And I think they can do it this year. The Big 12, guys. Uh, this is another one where I don't see a whole lot of reason to change my pick from last year. I'm taking Oklahoma. Um, like Lyle said, I mean, Rodney Anderson, Anderson is phenomenal. Um, I think he could be a, a not even really a Heisman sleeper at this point. I think that's what you said, too. He's not even really a sleeper pick in terms of your opinion. He's a slam dunk, and I think that he's a slam dunk to get into the Heisman talks. I don't know where he's going to finish, but watch out for him in the Doak Walker. Watch out for him for the Maxwell. I think he's fantastic, and I think they have a lot of other weapons offensively, too. They have a couple freshmen that are probably going to be starting on defense. I like Oklahoma to win the the Big 12 championship. And as a sleeper, I know this is something that Blake talked about earlier. Texas, what are they going to be able to do this year? We've been asking that with the last four years out of Texas, and I think they're going to be a decent team this year. I think they're going to poise a lot of problems for USC in the early weeks of the season, especially uh, in Austin. Um, But I think Texas is going to be a a team to watch for. Their defense was last year either really good or really bad. It didn't seem like there was a lot of carryover from week to week, but I think the defense showed a lot of potential, and I think that they could be really good this year. So Texas, my sleeper, Oklahoma, uh, I'm taking OU to win the Big 12 championship. I've got Oklahoma too, but here's where I want to pump the brakes a little bit, and if you guys have anything to chime in on this, feel free. I'm pumping the brakes a little bit on Oklahoma because while I have them to win – Kyler Murray is in a little bit of a situation that I've never seen before because this is a guy that just went ninth overall in the MLB draft to the Oakland A's, and the deal they made is you can come back and play your final year at quarterback at Oklahoma, 
and then you're going to transition to baseball. So my biggest question with Kyler is, is his head going to be in the right place? And I know that maybe seems like a dumb question. It's saying, you know, football season's here, your mind's focused on the one sport, but you just have to wonder in the back of your head because sometimes one hit, one injury, that can change everything. So that's my big question with Oklahoma. I don't know if you guys have thought about that at all. But oh, that's, I have. That's, why my, that's my thing with Kyler Murray, especially since he hasn't had a whole lot of playing time either in these last couple of years. I mean, he ha- he has looked good, but he's he's played in garbage time. But I've thought about that as well. How I mean, he I mean, it's not like he was taken in the draft. He was taken what ninth overall yeah. and got really, a, pr- really a pretty high. hefty contract. So he's he's definitely going to have to be extra cautious. But I mean, Oklahoma. I mean, I I think that's a, a solid pick. But I'm going to let Brady give his before I get mine. Uh, here, just quickly, my sleeper team's West Virginia, <clears throat> even though I don't know how much of a sleeper that is. Same with Lyle, Oklahoma winner, West Virginia, very close. Um, well, as I mentioned earlier, I have West Virginia in my final four, so I'm going to go with them um, to win the Big 12. And my, for my sleeper, I didn't want to go with like Oklahoma because I don't think they're really a sleeper. So I'm just going to go with TCU because they really shocked us last year. I know they shocked Brady on that one. TCU definitely saved him a few extra comments on that one. But I, I, I think TCU, they're, I don't know if they're going to replicate what they did last year because their first, what was it, nine or ten games when they I think they only had like one or two losses – they looked like a magical team, and they kind of lost it near the end. I, I think TCU can, you know, sustain it and be like another one of those nine to ten win kind of teams that can probably knock off like a West Virginia or Oklahoma. Then that does bring us to the Big Ten, which I feel like this one's going to be all over the place for everyone. Well, we got a lot of hate for it last year, but I've completely bought in. I'm taking Wisconsin in my Final Four. I think they're going to make the playoff, and I'm taking Wisconsin to win the Big Ten. The matchup I want to see, I don't care where it is, I don't care what bowl game it is, I don't care if it's a national championship, I don't care if it starts at 1 a.m., I'm going to watch it. I want to see a Clemson-Wisconsin battle because I want to see the Clemson D-line versus the Wisconsin O-line. It's going to be like splitting an atom. Like The whole world's going to end if this actually happens. I want to see them play each other because they're clear-cut the best two at their respective positions. I want to see Clemson and Wisconsin. I mean, and then with Jonathan Taylor running behind that O-line, I pulled this quote. And I have this ready. This is from a Sports Illustrated article that came out about Wisconsin's offensive line. This is a direct quote from Jonathan Taylor. He says, quote, when he fir- this is when he first started seeing the holes that the offensive line would open up in spring ball. This is what he said. Quote, I was hesitant to go through it. I didn't think the hole was supposed to be that big. That's how good these guys are. They're absolutely massive. They're my slam dunk to win the Big Ten. And I'm taking... Two sleepers in Michigan State. I don't know if they're really a sleeper, but Blake kind of teased this earlier. I like Northwestern for my sleeper. I think Clayton Thorson is a fantastic quarterback. I think he's actually really flying under the radar. He could potentially be a Heisman sleeper, but I'm not going to go that far as to say that. I have some friends who have really persuaded me, some Northwestern friends that have really persuaded me that this could be a team to watch for in the Big Ten this year, and I think they're going to be a sleeper for potentially winning that division in the Big Ten. But my slam dunk is Wisconsin. I have Ohio State as my team. Like I touched on earlier in the show, I think Ohio State's going to make the top four, and I think Ohio State is going to push their way back into the playoffs this year. I just, I'm not sold on Alex Hornibrook. I mean, that guy's one of those college quarterbacks that kind of gets by, and of course he has the line, he has Jonathan Taylor, but if, when it comes to the passing game, how much can he really do if there's a game where, say, Jonathan Taylor has an off night? Can he carry the team is my question, which is why I like Ohio State just a little bit more. But as my sleeper, I've got Northwestern, too. I think they surprised some people last year, and I think the trend's only going up for them. Uh, I like Wisconsin in this winter, but I think Ohio State could be right there. So those are my two fluttering right at the top. But my sleeper team, I'm going to do another tease for our later segment, is my big sleeper team is going to be Northwestern. I'm sorry. Take that back. Nebraska. <laughs> I think Nebraska is going to be up there. Lol, you guys had me. Go Big Red. I think they make a near six bowl. Nebraska does. Teasing my hot take for later in the episode. Man, these hot takes are definitely hotter than I thought they'd be. <laughs> but I guess we're going to have a clean sweep here, guys. Wisconsin, which I'm very shocked about because I thought we were going to be thinking maybe some Michigan, maybe some Ohio State. We've I had Ohio all State. bought in. The hate will end. Maybe some, maybe some Penn State. <laughs> I had Ohio State. Oh, you did? I yeah. thought you said, man, I guess whatever Lyle says, it's just going in one year. <laughs> Three of us tonight. have bought in. Some of the hate will continue. Yes. <laughs> Um, but for, for my sleeper, because once again, like I, I don't really consider Ohio State a sleeper. I don't really kind of consider Michigan a sleeper because those are teams that everyone's really talking about. Michigan State, where it was just two years ago where they didn't even make a bowl game. I think they won like three or four games. Last year, they just come out of nowhere. They win, I, I, can't, I think they won double-digit games. And this year, they're 
they're ranked 11th to start the season. Coming to Tempe here next week, that's going to be an interesting matchup. But Michigan State definitely a sleeper team. But the big, this is going to be a very interesting conference because I feel like it's probably, in my opinion, the best conference, at least the most competitive. Because also, like a Northwestern, they can win some games. Nebraska, what are they going to do? They've been a lot down the last few years. Rutgers, well, no, they're still going to be bad. I'm teasing you guys there. But guys, we got the Pac-12. Now, this one I feel like potentially could be all over the place. So, guys, Pac-12, what are your thoughts? Well, took the words right out of my mouth. I think the Pac-12 is all over the place. And for that reason, I'm not going to change a whole lot from my picks last year. I think the Pac-12 championship is exactly the same. I think it's USC and Stanford. And since I said I think it's all over the place, I think it's almost too close to call. So I'm going to go with my gut. I'm going to take USC over Stanford in the Pac-12 championship. As a sleeper, I think there are a lot of sleeper teams. I wanted to thank Oregon. I didn't want to throw out Washington because I don't know if that's really a sleeper pick. Um, and I was considering Washington State again. But I'm going to go with Arizona because back in my senior year of high school, you, you know how they have like the recruiting class? Like, oh, here's the 2035 Arizona State recruiting class. And you're like, wow, these kids are in diapers. When I was in high school, the recruiting class for this year's Arizona team was off the charts. They had like 26 recruits or something like that, like verbal commits, which is pretty insane for looking three or four years down the road. And a new coach in Kevin Sumlin. And they have a new coach in Kevin Sumlin. And they have Khalil Tate. And I'm not buying in 100% to Khalil Tate yet, but I'm glad he's starting to get the recognition he deserves because this is a guy that I watched when I was back in high school. I think he's phenomenal. I think they have a lot of weapons, and I think they can be deadly in the Pac-12 South, but they have to get through USC, and I'm just not ready to say that they're going to take down USC yet. So I think it's USC, Stanford, Pac-12 championship. I'll go with the Trojans, but Arizona's my sleeper, and there's no question about it. Well, I have pretty much what you had. Arizona's my sleeper, and you took most of the words out of my mouth in terms of what they can bring and what Khalil Tate has in his repertoire. In terms of my champion, I have Stanford, and we talked about it earlier. I went on my little spiel about that as they have a lot of returning guys. Bryce Love, their top three receivers, their top tackler, or their leading tackler on defense. So I think Stanford, and it, it's really up to KJ Costello. And, and the quarterback play was a lot of the reason I didn't pick Wisconsin to win the Big Ten, but I have a little bit faith, more faith in Costello to take that next step this year and lead Stanford. And I think with all the weapons he has around him, I think they're really going to prevail as the Pac-12 champions. I'm going to go with Stanford also. I think uh, what you've all said, but the major point, Bryce Love. I think we can all attest that he's the best running back in college football this year. At least to start. At at least to to start, yes. Week one, he's going in the best. 2,000 rushing yards last year. You said you weren't going to pick him as a sleeper because they're not a sleeper, but I'm going to go with Oregon as my sleeper team. Justin Herbert, one of those guys up on a level with Will Greer as a true quarterback in college football, so I think Oregon will do a very good job in the Pac-12 this year. I'm going Washington to uh, get it done this year, but I I think it's going to come down to, honestly, Washington, Stanford, SC, one of those three teams. My sleeper, and this is – I'm expecting a lot of this team, and that's Oregon. I'm taking it from Brady with Justin Herbert. I, this guy, I think, might be the number one quarterback taken in next year's draft. We've seen what he can do when he's healthy. And Oregon, slowly but surely, they kind of had that little stress where they were kind of underperforming. Last year, they looked good. And this recruiting class that they got coming in, a pretty good one. And their schedule, as always, starts off very, very, very easily for them. I, I think Oregon could be a potential sleeper that actually, I mean, I guess this could be a hot take. They could win the Pac-12 for this upcoming year. But also, guys, I want to do like a non-Power 5 kind. I mean, that's really tough because there's a lot of teams to choose from. So I guess pretty much not necessarily who you think is going to be like the best team, but like could you potentially see like another UCF making the playoffs or not the playoffs, but a New Year's Six? What do you think? Where does Notre Dame fall? I was fall just in? about to ask that. <laughs> They could be a non-power five because technically they. Uh, no. I, I think no. that's leave it, them out. If yeah, if you're talking about a non-power five, I think Notre Dame's the team to watch. But if we're talking about a real non-power five team, I'm gonna go with FAU. I think that they turned some heads toward Boca Raton last year. That's where they're from, right? It Boca is. Uh, yes. It is. There we go. Yeah, the nice Boca place. Raton Bowl. The Cherry Bundy are... Tart Cherry Boca Raton. The bowl. Rat's Mouth. Yeah. Oh, all right. Um, <laughs> that's what it is. That's. that's <laughs> That's, well, that's, that's what it is in English. Well, I think that Lane Kiffin has 
got things going in the right direction down in the rat's mouth. Um, I think FAU could potentially be another UCF team like last year, but I don't think that they can go undefeated because, like, we, I mean, they play Oklahoma. They've got a, a couple tough games on their schedule. I think that they're tested a few games, but this is a team that's probably going to blow out 65% of their schedule. It's always tough with these things because who would have thought last year – it was going to be UCF. Who thought two years ago it was going to be Western Michigan? So these these things are really, really tough to pick. But if you want my way too early prediction and, and who I think has the best chance of the non-Power Fives, I like Troy. Troy's been pretty good the last couple of years. They had double-digit wins last year. They've hung with Clemson a couple of times. So I'm not going to put it past them to put up another year like this and maybe sneak into a New Year Six. I mean, they also beat LSU. Yeah, yeah the they true. They did. Uh, I'm going to go with Toledo. Last year, they had three losses, one of which was in a bowl game, so two regular season losses. They're one of those teams where, you know, Mac shit every Thursday night. Who doesn't love watching Mac football on Thursdays? Gosh. Kidding. Either them or you could go with a team like Boise State, a top-ranked, top-ranked, top-25 ranked team, not in a Power 5 conference, but always plays well and plays higher than the conference they're in. Uh, I, I like FAU a lot as well. I mean, they looked really good under Lane Kiffin last year. They got Oklahoma week one, but they have a chance to go 11-1, and one, and that's just assuming they lose to Oklahoma. If they, if they somehow beat Oklahoma, they have a chance to go 12-0, and 0, which, and they could be like one of those teams like a UCF or Western Michigan where all of a sudden now they're looking to fight for a playoff spot and everyone's going, no way, no way. And a sleeper team I just want to include, that's Ohio. The Ohio Bobcats. Last year this team scored 40 points a game. They're returning their quarterback, Nathan Rourke, and last year was one of their that's like one of their best seasons since like the eighties. Yeah. So and I looked it up. They're they're returning some good guys. If they can keep scoring the ball, I mean I I looked up their schedule as well, but I guess all Mac teams have kind of a schedule you look ahead and go, yeah, they should go undefeated. Yeah. So I think Ohio, they they potentially could be one. But there's there was a lot of teams that I was looking at going, I could see some of these teams doing damage. Which is what I like to see. Oh, Ooh. Have we not given enough already? Oh. <laughs> well, boys, as I as I as, as I did mention earlier, it was God, getting hot in here, there. but not as hot as you know Nelly's great uh great song getting hot in here. And that is hot takes. Now I did this fun thing the other day on YouTube <clears> where <throat> I made a post saying, "Let's hear you guys' hot takes," because I wanted to hear what kind of fans like what they had to say for the upcoming season. I also made a post on Twitter saying, quote this tweet with your hot take for the college football season. And that tweet actually kind of took off. We had about 30 people quote the tweet. Also, by the way, for you guys that are watching right now, if you have not followed us on Twitter yet, make sure you do that. At the HH show underscore. It was already taken. But mind you, the, that at the HH show has zero followers, following zero people, and has zero tweets. Oh, you're funny. You're funny. No, no, no. But, He's talking about the one that's already used. Yeah, I know. Oh, that one, yeah. Blake didn't get that. Yeah, I'm did. sorry, the joke over my head. But no, if you guys follow us on Twitter, because that's the best way that you guys can interact with us, because when we post on YouTube, we get hundreds and hundreds of comments, whereas Twitter, like this one, only had 30 you know, to start off with, so there's a better chance of us reading yours on air. So if you want you know, your hot take or your question or whatever read on air, follow us on Twitter, hit us up. Hit us, hit up, hit up all four of us. Then you'll really grab our attention and go. But guys, we we've been saying a bunch of hot takes throughout the entire show. But I want to I want to name some hot takes from our fans and what uh they have to say for this upcoming season. Cole Henson says UCF is going to win another Natty. They're going to go back to back. Now that's that's asking for a lot. You love to see it. Back to back. You love to see it. You to- really do. Toby the Savage Killer. Alabama goes seven and five, and still makes the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's a good one. Nick Durand, Michigan goes eleven and one, and Shea Patterson wins the Heisman. That's like two hot takes for the price of one right there. there. It's hotter than I thought. I like it. It's hotter than I thought. Dylan Scott thinks that Georgia is going to have the nation's leading rusher as well as the nation's leading passer. So another kind of like two for one. You know uh, what? DeAndre tough. Swift is a guy we didn't talk about because he yeah. was so buried in that running back duo last year with Michelle and Nick Chubb. But that guy can flat out run the football. Now here's a take that's you know it's kind of like Arizona in July hot take, but this Chris Cooper says there are going to be three SEC teams in the playoff this year. Don't know how that's going to work, but hey, who knows? Stranger things have happened. Our good buddy Richard Nixon hey, decided to chime in. My on, guy on this. Rich, Richard Nixon says that Arizona is going to win the Pac-12, go to a New Year's Six bowl, but lose. 
See, I like it because you kind of save it at the end because you don't want to go super hot, but you want to keep it kind of. I mean, Pac-12, everyone's bound to lose in the bowl game. So, <laughs> Andrew Bowen thinks that Utah wins the Pac-12. Wow, <laughs> I don't know. That one caught me off guard. Stay, staying on the Pac-12, <laughs> staying on the Pac-12. John Barrow thinks that Chip Kelly will win the Pac-12 in his first year with UCLA. I guess what's a, what's a hotter take, Utah or UCLA? And then BK will really be on top of the world. Will Wilton Spate, Spate wins the Pac-12. He might not even start. <laughs> Josh and I were looking it up today. It's like it could be this guy or this guy. UCLA has announced their, st- their depth chart for week one. And all of the positions are there except for quarterback. It's like it's either they're like, oh, yeah, this is our starting depth. These are our starters. These are our second team guys. And then starting quarterback, it's Wilton Spate or Devin Modster. Or some other guy. It's like, oh, then don't even release a depth chart then. <laughs> From Edgar Hernandez, he has two hot takes, and these are some pretty interesting ones. They're completely different. Number one is Ed Oliver will be the second Houston player to win the Heisman. I know we talked about him earlier. And Fresno State goes to a New Year's Six Bowl for the first time in school history. Well, well, I mean, it's his. only been going on for so long, but Go Fresno dogs. State, I think two years ago they won like one game, then last year they won, I think, ten. So that's that's a pretty good one. Now, the this one's one of my personal favorites from M.B. Putnick, is that Kansas wins three of their first four games. Really? Now, Kansas, I, I looked up their schedule. You couldn't ask for an easier way to start the season if you're playing, like, non-FCS teams. You got Nichols, which, by the way, did it used to be Nichols State? And no, 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 they're Nichols. still Nichols State, aren't they? No, it's yeah. just oh, no, they changed it. It's just Nichols now. According to Google, they're still Nichols State. Really? But, yeah, so, I think you're right. I think they might just be Nichols. So they got Nichols, which they should run, run away with. Central Michigan... Who knows? But well, then you're getting Rutgers and Baylor, two of the bottom feeders <laughs> for right. respected conferences. So, I, I mean, my goodness, if they're the winning locks. one game last year and not shaking the opposing team's hands at the start of the game like they did with Baker, what's going to happen if they win four? Are oh. they just not going to take the field? <laughs> Bro, they're going <laughs> to UCF <laughs> National Champion Parade. And so those are all from YouTube, and here's some of our favorites from Twitter. From Andrew Coster, Georgia Tech wins the ACC Coastal and plays in a New Year's Six Bowl. All right. That's that's a that's a very hot right. take. Interesting. And from our good friend Brady Vernon, the Oregon State Beavers will win not one, but two Pac-12 games this year. Two. Is one, one of them's going to be against the same. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. So as we mentioned, guys, if you have hot takes, just keep on tweeting them. I mean, week by week, there's probably not going to be hot takes unless someone's just saying this team's going to beat another team. But, like I said, make sure to follow us on Twitter so that way we can read your comments and just interact with us. You know, we, we get bored sometimes. We like to talk to the fans. And if a hot take's good enough, we'll, we'll talk about it on the show. Oh, yeah. Oh, we'll go more in-depth into it. Oh, of course. Now, we, we're going to switch now to the Q&A. I posted a Q&A video earlier in the show and – or actually early in the day, and it had about 200 total comments – so going through these was a pain. Now, Lyle, this first one's going to be for you. Don't yes. we have hot takes we're supposed to talk about, too? Oh, well, I mean, you guys have been kind of going off your and hot you takes have more? Already. I do have more. Oh, we got more hot wow. takes? I have two. Oh. I have two. I, have, right. I teased one of them. Oh, oh boy. boy. Get ready. I'll go quick. Get the fire extinguisher. Nick Bosa goes number one in the draft. I don't know if that's a hot take. I, don't, I think well, he's projected to go top five. <laughs> No one's top. We, we said his name once today. Well, okay, but we've been talking about, that's like, true. Heisman. Sticking with the Big Ten. Right. Ready? I said Nebraska will go to a New Year's Six Bowl. Scott Frost wins 10 games and is the Big Ten Coach of the Year. I like that. First that, year in that Nebraska. That one I like. I like that. And Wilton Spate win the Heisman. Oh, there and there. Before, before we move on, I got one. And, the only, and I, the only reason I want to bring it up is because I know it's a really hot take. Washington loses at least three games this year. Potentially four. Because... I've bought in on Wisconsin. I've bought in on a lot of teams that ever since we started this. But season one, I would not buy into UW. Last year, I would not buy in. And this year, I'm not buying in until they win a meaningful game. And if they win week one against Auburn, I'll buy in. I'll take them to win the Pac-12 North over Stanford. I will completely change my Pac-12 prediction if they can beat Auburn week one. But I just don't think they can. So until they prove me wrong, I have them losing three games this year. Yeah. At least. I, I don't have another hot take, but I, I don't, I'm not going to disagree with that, to be honest, because back when they made the playoffs, there were so many weapons around Jake Browning, yeah. guys, guys like John Ross, Dante Pettis. But now it's kind of in the hands of Jake Browning, and he still can't and, really— And Miles Gaskin. They okay, still have Gaskin, true. but the wide receiving core has just dropped true. off a little bit. And when it comes to the passing game and Browning, he can still only throw it like 35 yards max. I, I mean, three, three games you can look at are Auburn, at Oregon, and then against Stanford. Yeah. 
And then the Apple Cup is never an easy game. They still have to play at Washington State. There are a couple tough games that could be on their schedule. Big Bad Arizona State comes into Seattle back on er, on September 22nd. So I think that's the game to watch for for UW in 2018. I, I love the hot takes because, you know, that's the thing is they can never be too outlandish. You can say the stupidest things and, hey, maybe they maybe they become real. Some like of, Wilton Spate. <laughs> some some of, you should have seen some of the hot takes. Not that there, there, there weren't any bad ones, but some people, when I mean, you got hot takes and then you got, like, the hottest takes. Like, these, they were, they were going for it. But, hey, that's what you got to do. But now let's go to the Q&A, guys. I've got about 10 questions for us to answer. Lyle, as I mentioned, this first one's going to be directed to you because you can answer it best. Number one, I guess, do you consider Notre Dame to be serious contenders? And number two, we kind of talked about this earlier. What will it take for them to get into the college football playoff? I think they're going to be like nine and three is what I said because they've got a lot of guys coming back. Obviously, their two biggest losses were losing Mike McGlinchey and Quentin Nelson because that left side of the line was better than anybody else in the country by a landslide last mm-hmm. year. The problem with them is is I'm just not 100% sold on Brandon Wimbush. I, I think... I think he's got some good legs, and it's all going to be about the passing game with him last year because he really, at times, struggled to throw the football down the field, and hence why Ian Book would often come in and relieve him. And that Ian Book won the bowl game last year. But for Notre Dame to really make a push into the playoffs and get in, I, I think one loss and they still get in. So I, I think that's the key because Notre Dame – like I hate to say it because I'm a fan, but they often get some special treatment from the committee just because of they know the publicity they'll get if they're in the top four. So I think one loss is going to be what it takes for them to get in. I think be with that one loss, I think you're going to have to see Wimbush play a lot better than he did last year. Well, they could get in with two losses. I, th- I think that'd be asking a lot, though. Yeah, because it depends. I, they play five ranked teams, and then two of the games against non-ranked teams that they have on their schedule are two teams that we've brought up earlier in the show that could be sleepers, and it's Pitt and Northwestern. I think it just depends when their losses come. If they're like at the That's, beginning of the season, yeah. if they lose week one to Michigan, they're okay. But yeah. and yeah. then if they drop another, if, the if, later they, the if loss they lose to work. Michigan week one and then lose a game later in the season, as long as it's not the last game, they can realistically get in with two losses. Blake Walker wants to know which SEC coach will have a better year with their new team, Dan Mullen with Florida or Jimbo Fisher with Texas A and M. Jimbo. Jimbo. I'm gonna go with with Mullen at Florida. Yeah. I, I, I disagree with Lyle. I, I think Mullen, Texas A&M, I mean, they, they were living high in those Johnny football days, but ever since, I don't know. I, I don't think Jimbo's going to make that much of an impact. Brian Reynolds wants to know, do you feel as if the championship race is more wide open this year than compared to previous years? I don't know. I don't, I don't see much of a difference. And the reason I say that was because at first I wanted to say yes, and then I wanted to say no. So I think it's it, it's kind of wide open. This is also the first year we've been doing the Harris Highlight Show where I think that the top four in the preseason are right. So, I mean, last year we absolutely torched it. And once the playoff rankings actually started coming out, we torched it. And it's been like that for two seasons now. And now the first time I think they finally got it right. So I don't see a, a whole lot of difference. I think it's a little early to be addressing that question. I just think it's tough to say without seeing these teams play a game. Halfway through the year, then we can address it. If you've got seven teams that are undefeated and in the top 10, then it's a little different. But week one, I think you got to see some football to start talking about it more seriously. Week one, tough to tell. I mean, it's one of those things where you look at the last couple of playoffs, there's always that one team. At the beginning of the year, no one had in. What Year one was what? Michigan State? Yeah. They were in there, and then they fall off, and it was like, oh, Michigan State's going to be back. Arizona State was, I think, one of them listed a couple yeah. of times. Yeah, Herbie. Arizona State was listed in like 2014. Thanks, Herbie. Well, yeah, they were up at six. Yeah, but it's one of those things where it's way too early to tell. Two or three weeks into the season, at the earliest, is when you can probably start to get a real understanding of what's going on. Mason Fitzgerald wants to know, which is more unlikely, Texas in the playoff or Alabama out of the playoff? Texas in the playoff is more Unlikely, yeah, because I, I think they have um, more work I'll, to do than Alabama. They have does. a lot more to prove. Alabama, I think. I mean, it, they're an SEC school. It seems like half the time your SEC matchups could be up in the air, especially when you're playing teams like Auburn and Georgia. And it, we we continue to talk about it. The SEC is, I think, consistently has more. Sorry. I think they consistently have more, what, top 10 teams than any of the other conferences. Big 10 has been up there lately, but there are so many powerhouses in the SEC, I don't think anybody's really a lock. Yeah, I'll second that. I think Texas making the playoffs is a lot more unlikely. 
Do you think that South Carolina has a chance at the playoff, even though they already have the guaranteed loss to Chattanooga, from Joe Nem? I don't. I think the loss to Chattanooga really hurts their chances, but bottom line, I just don't think they can get past some of the other SEC teams in conference, let alone getting into the playoff. Yeah, I mean, look, they could be 12-0 and going into, or 11-0 and going into that final week of the year, and Chattanooga is going to stomp all over them. Hence, there go their, their college football Late playoff losses. chances. Late there losses. There you go. All right, Josh, I got an SC question for you from Brett Eskelson. I think that's how it's pronounced. Now, let's let's try to have a quick a quick response on this one. But this is I good. always get torched for this. This this is this is a good one. I'm I'm generally interested because this is actually a really good question. Which USC freshman will have a bigger impact? JT Daniels or Amon Ra St. Brown? I'm gonna go with JT Daniels solely because he's the starting quarterback. And I think that Amon Ross St. Brown, this is a guy that Lyle knows a lot about, especially with Equinemius at Notre Dame. And we had talked about Amon Ra a lot this past year, especially when he committed to SC. And I think that he's going to be instrumental in their offense right off the bat. But the reason I'm going to take JT is because he's the starting quarterback. He's going to be the, the, the poster boy at this point moving forward. And the big reason, and I was telling this to, to BK earlier, the big reason I think he's the starter is because if the, if the race was that close, I'm not saying Clay Helton's basing his decision-making process off of this. He had a, a true freshman quarterback that was ready to be a starting quarterback, and he opted to go to Max Brown, and he looked like a fool. They get beat by Alabama. They get beat by Utah. He throws Sam Darnold in there, and Sam Darnold wins the Rose Bowl. So then Sam Darnold, things didn't work out for SC last year, still went to a New Year's Six Bowl game. They still had a pretty decent year. They won the Pac-12 championship. He's going to go with his gut this time and start the true freshman quarterback who he, st- who he should have started a few years ago. So I think JT Daniels is the more impactful freshman, at least starting off the season. Hmm. I love this one from uh, Kyle Seigel. Do you guys have UTEP winning it all this year? UTEP? No. Is that what you just said, UTEP? Yeah, UTEP. UTEP. Weren't oh. they ranked 130 out of 130? I think they might have been. Yes. I take UTEP. Good question. No, I, I don't. <laughs> Keep them pouring in, buddy. <laughs> All right. But yeah, we, like, like I said, there was about 200 questions we got total. Um, mm-hmm. A good amount on Twitter as well. So Also, as I mentioned, if you're not following us on Twitter, follow us on Twitter. Because when we ask the Q&As, whoever tweets us, they get top priorities. But guys, it is time to transition now into everyone's favorite part of the show, and that is the Pick'ems. Now, before we get started on the Pick'ems, guys, I do have to promote the Pick'ems group on ESPN. As you guys remember from last year, we had the highest scorer in the entire country that was in our group last year. That's that, which is unbelievable. I don't know how many total players there were, however many there were. The highest was in the group last year, so that's an amazing thing. But as I mentioned, the College Gridiron has returned. With the new season comes everything that we love. Loaded Saturday schedules, big name schools, Heisman contenders, and the college football playoff. Who will be this season's disappointment? Can a surprise team make the leap? Now is the time to put your knowledge to the test. Each week, you'll pick 10 matchups from the full slate of games to choose from, some more evenly matched than others, and it's up to you guys to pick the winners. So, if you want to sign up, the link is in the description below. We're all in the group. Well, I'm in the group. These guys still need to sign up. But by the time this is up, they'll be in the group, hopefully. This is the first I'm hearing of this. <laughs> and you guys can compete with us as well as a bunch of other fans. We have about 250 members right now, but I know we can get that number up. So it's just a fun thing. It takes like one minute every week. And who knows, maybe you could beat last year's winner. I forget what his name was. I think it was it's Asian Killer Deluxe sounds familiar. It was. It was, I think it was, it was, it was Asian, Killer, Asian Deluxe. Killer Deluxe. And he had the highest score in the country. So if you can dethrone him, that'd be fantastic. But <laughs> if, if you if you dethrone Asian Killer Deluxe, we will personally get you on the show. Like, we won't fly you out here. We'll get you to call in, <laughs> but you'll get on the show and talk about how, in fact, you did it. But guys, last year, Josh was our winner for the Pick'ems. He had the most correctly picked. I was in dead last. The year before was Lyle. So I guess it means it's either Brady or I's turn uh, this year to get her done. So guys, for the first Pick'em game of the week and of the year, we are going to go with Louisville versus number one Alabama. Well, guys, uh, reigning champ, I will start this off by picking the reigning champs. I think Alabama went the victory over Louisville to start things off. I, I kind of like your bet that we talked about in our one Thank and only you. Blake Betts segment earlier in the show. I think it's not going to be a blowout game, but I do think Alabama pulls away, especially in the second half. If they're just the better team. Bama. Bama. I'm kind of bummed we're not getting this with Lamar Jackson in it because I think that would have been a much better game, but Bama, I, I think, easily. Florida Atlantic at number seven, Oklahoma. 
taking Oklahoma. I still like FAU, but I think this could be their one guaranteed loss of the season. Heisman campaign starts Saturday for Rodney Anderson. Oklahoma by a lot. Although Lane Kiffin will do Lane Kiffin things. Oklahoma. I, I really like Florida Atlantic. I don't think that they're going to get beaten by a lot. I think it's going to be at least competitive until like the third or maybe fourth quarter, but I, I do think Oklahoma will get the win. Ole Miss and Texas Tech. This was a kind of a close one for me, but because um, I now have two friends that go to Ole Miss, I'm taking the Rebs. College Station's a tough place to play a game. I like Texas A&M in the opener. I'm going with Rebels, Ole Miss. Texas Tech can score the ball. Regardless of who's their quarterback, who's throwing the ball, they can they can score. I'm going to go with Texas Tech at this one, especially because of that scoring aspect. Because Ole Miss, I, I don't... Well, I mean, it's like the general thing. You have to score more points than the other team to win. Thanks, I, I just think Texas Tech is going to score more points. Now, Wait, this, I just said A&M, didn't I? Okay, I'll go with Texas Tech. Whoops. And I'm not paying attention to him. He's not paying attention to me. <laughs> I don't know what's going We're on this week. Now, this one, in my opinion, guys, is kind of like the one game that I'm really excited about. And that's Washington, number six, against number nine, Auburn. Yeah, I kind of teased this earlier as well. I think Washington could end up losing three games this year. That's my hot take. Um, I like Auburn in this one. I think they're the better team. I think they've got more weapons. And if Washington can prove me wrong, then by all means, prove me wrong and I'll buy in. Again, going into Auburn, not an easy place to go. It's a neutral why game. But it's, oh, it's, in, I, it's, in, it's getting, in Georgia. It's in Atlanta. I, it's in Atlanta. Uh, so yeah. Why am I getting neutral. all these locations wrong? I keep getting all these locations. There'll be a lot of Tigers fans there. Yeah. I keep getting all these locations wrong. But yeah, okay, in Georgia, Washington doesn't travel to the South a whole lot. The last time they were in Georgia didn't go too well. They lost the playoff game to Bama. And I think Auburn is just simply more talented. Jared Siddham's a good quarterback. I think he's in his final year there. So I like the Tigers. It's our week zero too, Lyle. Don't worry. This past weekend was college football week zero. It's our week zero. It's fine. Oh, it's all good. It's all good, we're dog. Good. We're good. It's all good, dog. I'm going Washington. Hmm. Mixing All things right. up. Mixing things up. I, I would love to back the pack, but I just think Auburn is simply the better team. Tennessee against number 17, West Virginia. Another one that I think Blake's bets. Uh, Blake hit uh, the nail right on the head here. On the money. Um, huh? Oh, on yeah. the money. Yes, forget <laughs> about what I said. Right on the money. Um, I like West Virginia in this one. Um, I think it can be a close game, at least for a little while, and then I do think they pull it away at the end. Mountaineers are just the better team, but uh, I'd like to see Rocky Top compete. I got to go with West Virginia. I think they're just simply going to outmatch the Vols. The battle of two of the greatest songs in college football, Rocky Top and Country Roads. Yep. Oh boy. And Country Roads are taking it home. Yeah, I, I like West uh, Virginia. I, I like West Virginia in this game. Number two, or number 22, Boise State at Troy. Got to take the Broncos. I think this is this could be one of the better games of the week. And I think this comes down to who has the ball last. And I think the Broncos have the ball last. I like Troy. I had him as my non-power five to do the best of anybody. So I'm going with Troy. I'm going Boise State. I took Boise State initially, but as the show's progressed, I, I really like Troy. So I'm going to switch my picks very last minute and roll with the Trojans. Number 14, Michigan at number 12, Notre Dame. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. One of my favorite games that I've watched in recent history is that 2011 game uh, in Ann Arbor when they wore the throwback uniforms. Sorry, Lyle. Um, that's one of my favorite games, and I think Michigan pulls away in this one just slightly. And again, I think this comes down to whoever has the ball last, just like it did back in 2011 at the Big House. I like Michigan. I'm really happy this rivalry is back, and it's back for two years at least. We'll see after that. This one's in South Bend. We'll see how Shea Patterson does in his first game as a Wolverine. I think he's a pretty good quarterback, but having said that, I, I like the Irish to take their first game. Game days in South Bend. It's a Notre Dame home game at night on NBC. They're going against a Michigan team where Jim Harbaugh's been on the hot seat ever since he really got to Michigan. I'm going Notre Dame at home with a win against Michigan week one. I'm going with the Wolverines in this one, so I think we have a nice even, even split, but I, I think it's going to be a good game. I, I love those nighttime Notre Dame mat uh, matinees, or not matinees, I always get this mixed up. What is it? A matinees during the day. I know that, because I always <laughs> see them in the in the morning, because it's cheaper. But um, no, I, I like those ones. And as Josh mentioned, the tw 2011 game with Denard, that was with Denard, Denard Robinson, Robinson, right? Robinson. He just, whew, that, was, that was a dandy. 
Number 8 Miami against number 25 LSU. All these games are neutral sites, which I hate. Miami is a team that's ranked in the top 10 that no one on this show has mentioned today. Yeah. And I think the reason why is because, uh, I'm not going to speak for you guys, but for me, they're a top 10 team that's not going to be a top 10 team halfway through the season. I think they're a fantastic team. I just don't think they hang in the playoff race, but I do think they take down LSU. This is tough. Like I, I think Josh just kind of hit it right on the head. I don't think Miami is going to be anywhere close to what they were last year. I mean, that defense was incredible. They did lose a handful of guys. Malik Rogier, he's he gets by, I'll say, as a quarterback. I think the Hurricanes get by week one, but it's not going to last forever. I'll say that. I, I'm going to go. I mean, this game's at Jerry World. 100,000 people. I also think it's on a Sunday. Yeah. This game's on a Sunday. Which is kind of weird for opening weekend of college football. I'm going LSU at the neutral site on this game. They're going to be a top 25 team that was put at 25th, so they have of the most of the top 25 teams, technically. They have the most to prove. They have the most to get up, get going, and get higher in the rankings as the weeks go on. So I think LSU is going to win this one at Jerry World. I'm going to switch my picks again, guys. I originally took Miami, but LSU at Jerry World, now that the more I think about it, the, the more I'm liking LSU a lot. I mean, they, they did lose some guys from last year, but ooh, I, I think they can get it done. I, I think LSU can get it done. Now, the next game takes place, I believe, on Monday, which is even more mm -hmm. strange, and that's number 20, Virginia Tech, and number 19, Florida State. Things went south very quickly for Florida State last year, and it started in week one, and I don't think that ha th that's going to carry over into this season. I think Florida State starts off the season with a win. I'm going to second that. Florida State, like I said, I have them as my sleeper team in the ACC. There's too much talent there, and they're going to pick up a week one win. I'm going Florida State as well. Clean sweep, you yeah. I like Florida State. I mentioned I like Virginia Tech as a sleeper, but I think Florida State, they're going to they're gonna shock a lot of people this year. And that does bring us to the worst of the worst. We do it every year, every week. The absolute worst game of the, the week. And it's, it's kind of tough to tell in the first week what the worst game is. So, I mean, there could be some, some really bad ones. But in our opinion, this is the one that stinks. This is the one you couldn't pay us to go to. This is the one that I wouldn't watch on TV. This is the one where if I was given $10 to bet on it, I would just say I, I'm going to pass on that. But what is the spread? But, guys, the, the worst of the worst this week is Fordham at Charlotte. Well, I just spent the summer uh, on I knew Cape you were Cod going with broadcasting this. baseball. Uh, Lyle was up there as well working for another team. And my boss mentor person, uh, Dan Duva, is the voice of the Vegas Golden Knights. And he spent a couple years at Fordham. And uh, also, the greatest sports broadcaster in history, Vin Scully, former voice of the Dodgers, went to Fordham. So I'm taking the Rams. Joe uh, went to IU, Josh. You're wrong. Man. Relax. <laughs> Man, I, I always try to think of some good story with the worst of the worst. Let's see. Um, Do you like ham? It's all right. <laughs> all right. Well, there you go. There's your pick. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go with something else. <laughs> Panthers play in Charlotte. I have DJ Moore on my fantasy team, and I hope he does well. Charlotte. <laughs> but I couldn't think I, of I like the ham one thing. better. <laughs> uh, do you like ham? I do like ham. There you go. So, say a guy with an axe was trying to fight a ram. Who would win? Well, the rams got the horns, and the guy with the axe would be dead. Go moved with Fordham, because they're the rams, and rams have horns. I think coming into the year, Charlotte is ranked maybe dead last or second to last in regards to FBS teams. They won a whopping one game last year, guys. Uh -huh. Fordham, they won four games. So, based off those metrics, I did the calculations in my head while you guys were talking about this. You always were good at math, Blake. I was. Fordham gets the job done. At Charlotte, on the road. Go a, Rams. A road victory. And as we always do, we wrap it up with our Arizona State Sun Devils. Guys, we are welcoming UTSA into Sun Devil Stadium this week. Herm Edwards, his debut. But UTSA, guys, they almost beat us, what was it, two years ago? Two. So this is a team not to sleep on. Does Arizona State start the season? 1-0. Another hot take that I didn't feel was relevant earlier, and I'll bring it up now. Manny Wilkins, ASU quarterback for the third straight year, will finish top three in the conference in passing yards, and it all starts with a win over UTSA this Saturday in Tempe. Man, week one last year for the Sun Devils did not 
go. Great. They, they got the win, but my goodness, was it much closer than it needed to be. And I've just got this sneaking suspicion that it's going to be the same way. Sun Devils win, but I, I don't think they're going to blow them out the way they should. I'm going to go with the Sun Devils. I think the third quarter will be very big for ASU. I think Sparky is doing lots of push-ups in the third quarter. Lots of push-ups. I think the Sun Devils score at least three times in the third quarter. I, I I think Arizona State gets the job done because, I mean, this is a game where you got to come out, especially for Herm Edwards, he needs to set the message. Yeah. He needs to set the message early on that this is going to be a different team than it was the previous few years and that this is going to be a team that's going to compete. Because if you come out and you struggle against UTSA, like, a win would be great, but if it's an ugly win, that's already going to cause a lot of problems, especially for Herm at the helm. So I think Arizona State gets the win, and I, I think you said it as well. I, I think Sparky's going to be doing a lot of push-ups. But, you know, the same thing happened a few years ago without UTSA. That was going to be an easy win. They were going to walk into the Alamo Dome. They were going to get the job done. They did, but it was very close. So it'll be interesting. I, I hope it's a good game. I You know, it's I hope we win, but a, a competitive game would be nice. That was also the game a couple years ago where Nikhil Harry sort of put his name on the map with that diving, falling, one-handed catch at the back of the end zone. And let's officially make that year three of us putting Nikhil Harry on the map on this show, because my God, does that guy deserve some recognition. Boletnikov does... winner. I, I, I think I'm on Josh, board with that. I could see it as well. You and I saw it today. He's, what, 34th, 35th best like player that. ranked in the country by Sports Illustrated? Yeah, something like that. He will be he a first rounder. It. Well, Nikhil Harry, guys, he's a fan of the show, so we're going to do everything it takes to try to get him on ah. for future episodes. Nikhil, we'll try to get you on soon. But, the, guys, that does wrap up the first episode of season three and the cameras are still rolling that's fantastic yeah, that's oh wait no bk forgot to turn theirs on oh you're right oh boy that's guys okay. the red lights on. That's oh okay. yeah you're right that's okay as red we mentioned means stop Josh. as we mentioned guys <laughs> next week we're going to be in the studio which does mean you guys can listen live on blaze radio online.com now we are going to be live at 12 a.m eastern time next Night. tuesday so i guess technically Wednesday morning, that, that whole thing gets confusing. 9 p.m. Pacific If you're on the on West Tuesday. Coast, 9 p.m. If you're, like, in Chicago, 11 p.m. I'll, I'll put all, everything in the description so that way you can figure it out. But we're going to be live on air, so that way you can actually interact with us as well. And again, back to the Twitter plug, at the HH Show underscore. Um, but, yeah, guys, we'll be back in a week. Hopefully a lot of good college football comes of this next week. We're going to have a great time at the Arizona State football game this week. And, yeah, thank you for watching this episode. And hopefully you'll stick around for the rest of the season. Lots of cool things coming. Lots of great interviews with collegiate players. And just a whole a whole lot of great segments. Brady's got a segment that he wants. We, we're not going to tell you what, but it's, it's a great segment you guys definitely will not want to miss. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment. And, of course, subscribe if you haven't. For Blake, Brady, Josh over there, and Lyle over there, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you guys next week. If you're going to college game day, Bring a sign. If you're going to college game day, bring a sign. Give a shout out to the show or to Chattanooga or just say a sign that says hi, guys. We'll, we'll, we'll make sure we see it. Thank you.